Paradigm Chats. Hey guys, welcome back to Paradigm Chats. Uh, I hope this video finds you well. And uh, again, this is just another opportunity for our church to connect with you in this uh, weird time where we don't get to gather together. Uh, we're going to digitally uh, gather in this way. And so I hope that you will respond in the comments. I hope that you'll interact with us uh, so that this really can be a conversation that we're having. My name is Evan Henson. I'm the Associate Pastor of Student Ministries here at First Lubbock. And my name is Jerry Ramirez, and I'm the Missions Pastor here at First Lubbock. My name is Johnny Hughes. I'm the Worship and Arts Associate here at First Lubbock, and I lead worship at Paradigm. And my name is Josh Jackson, and I'm the Director of Communications here at First Lubbock. Um, so uh, one thing that we say a lot from the stage, we have it uh, printed on our walls here at First Lubbock, is being on mission where our feet are. So what does it actually mean to be on mission where if you are? I think, I mean, that's the life of Jesus, mm -hmm. you know, is wherever he was. He was he was healing people. He was performing miracles. He was loving on people. Um, and then whenever he commissioned us with a great commission, but also with uh, the commandment in John 13, 35, uh, to love uh, in the same way that he loved us. Um, I think that if, if we were to boil it all down to something, that would be the thing. Uh, to be on mission wherever our feet are is to live like Jesus wherever we find ourselves and, and to, to look at how Jesus loved on people, uh, to see how he brought them into the fold, and that's to show care and to show grace and to show mercy um, because we've seen how he showed that to us first. Um, and if we can just view everyone through that lens that Jesus died for me, he died for you, he died for you, he died for you, and everyone we come in contact with at, at Starbucks, at Texas Tech, at, at work, wherever it is, uh, he died for them too. Um, and to just love them the same way that he loved, uh, loved us. Yeah, good. Well, okay, so um, if, our, if our calling is to be on mission locally where we are, and, you know, Jesus also pretty much did his entire ministry locally, um, how do international missions play into our creed of being on mission where we are? Yeah, a few years ago it got really popular to uh, bash short-term missions, and there were some fair arguments, uh, but by and large, uh, I didn't buy most of them. Jerry, you probably read a lot of them, but a lot of books were written. Uh, and the, the fair criticism that did come out of this was that oftentimes people in the West, people of means, right, would go to poorer countries, and we would use those people as kind of a backdrop for our experience. Yeah. And so uh, the, the orphanage uh, in a third world country, or whatever it may be, uh, the actual work we were doing there wasn't all that important. Uh, but we felt good when we got home. We got to hold a poor kid and put him on our picture on Facebook. And our friends got to say, oh man, you were just so great to spend all that money to go work in this awful squalid country. And uh, we got to feel good, but the people that we were interacting with uh, were no better for it. Right. And so uh, in, in response to that, a lot of churches said, we just want to do short-term missions. Our church said, no, we're just going to be very uh, responsible with the way that we do short-term missions. Yeah. And so for us, uh, the reason we go internationally, and we do uh, uh, water well trips pretty regularly. I think four times a year we try to get a water well trip in where we give... Uh, communities access to water that didn't have fresh water and not only that but then teach them how to use that fresh water and teach them hygiene and those sorts of things uh, we go to Belize and we go uh, to Honduras and we go to Guatemala and we go to Africa and we went uh, uh, to uh, Alaska last year we've been all over the place in these far-reaching places it certainly are not where our feet are normally right. Mm -hmm. right. but the reason that we do those is because we have resources that they don't and to be a good steward of that, we want to help them gain access to that for the sake of the gospel. And so um, the story in the scripture that I, I point to a lot, maybe you've heard me use this illustration, is the story of Lazarus. That God called Lazarus out of the grave, uh, but as far as we know, uh, Lazarus died again. His body failed him again, and Jesus didn't raise him out of the grave that time. But what Jesus did in that episode was he gave Lazarus a glimpse of what the kingdom of heaven was going to look like in its fullness when death no longer has a place. And so in the same way, we go and feed people and we offer them water and we offer them resources and we offer them shelter. Uh, and we do that knowing that they're going to have a need again one day and we won't be there to meet it. It's just we can't be. 
uh, but we gave them a glimpse of what the kingdom of heaven is going to look like in its fullness one day. And so that's how we have reconciled the, the fair criticisms and yet a responsible stewardship of what it means to, to go international and to even just go further out from our local community. So, um, Jerry, uh, you're the you're the missions pastor here at First Lubbock. What are some practical ways um, that we can be on mission where our feet are? You know, we talk a lot about the great commandment mm -hmm. that we're to love the Lord with all our heart, our mind, and our soul. But then the second is to love our neighbors ourselves. Mm -hmm. And in our community where we are, where we find ourselves, mm -hmm. these are our neighbors. When we reach out of our church walls, we are around our neighbors. And so therefore, we discover that our neighbors are hungry. We discover that our neighbors are in need, mm -hmm. that they have utility needs. And albeit it may be because of choices that they made, but that's not our issue. Our issue is to be Jesus to them. And, and that so when we are helping them, that when they do ask us, why do you do this? That they know that we love them because Jesus loves us and he has a greater purpose for them. Okay, good. Um, so... We've talked a lot about going. We've talked a lot about um, reaching out um, to people who are, who are near us, who are far away from us. Um, but at the time of filming this, we're in a state of quarantine. <laughs> yeah. So um, our mission efforts have definitely changed. So can you just touch on how they have changed in recent weeks? It has been uh, amazing to see how things have shifted in our own community and in our world. Uh, we are seeing a great need among our children, among our families, because now where they were receiving, uh, many of them were receiving uh, two free meals at school on a daily basis, are no longer receiving those. And so our kids are hungry, are hungry. And, and you know, you can look at me and go, that guy's never been hungry a day of his life. Mm -hmm. I don't know that any of us, maybe some in our audience uh, tonight or today, could say, yeah, I've been truly hungry. But most of us cannot say that. And so the children that we're dealing with, some of them indeed are hungry. And so we're trying to figure out a, 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 with our partners, LISD, Friendship Schools, uh, Lubba Cooper Schools, uh, South Plains Food to Kids, we're trying to figure out how can we meet those needs and not bankrupt us. Yeah. Uh, and so that is a great need right now. The, the utilities, they've already been told we're not going to do cutoffs uh, right now because of the crisis that we find ourselves in. Yeah. So uh, feeding children is probably one of the greatest needs in families. Is, yeah. is they're, they're hungry and maybe they don't want to spend their resources that they do have on food right now because they don't know what ahead. Yeah. And I, I would assume that, I mean, we do, uh, I know... Uh, here at First Lubbock, we've done um, we've done lunch meals for students in the Friendship District during the summer when there's no school. Um, but obviously, the situation is a lot different because it's not just that schools have closed temporarily, but like people don't have jobs, they don't have ways to provide for themselves. So it's it's really something that we haven't really encountered as a as a church and really as a as a world um, in in this kind of modern age. Josh, unemployment today has grown exponentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we are continuing and will continue to see people lose their jobs. Yeah. And so where is the food going to come from? If, if we as a church, if God's people don't step up, these, these kids are going to be hungry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it is very, very important that we do our part. Mm -hmm. As long as we can. Yeah. So how can, how can we partner um, in mission efforts during times like this? Well, right now, just yesterday, we packed over 200 uh, snack bags. And then those snack bags don't include uh, big boxes. of These are individual snack bags that have uh, peanuts, that have uh, Pop-Tarts, uh, graham crackers, those kinds of things that, that, that will... Maybe sustain us for a little while. Mm -hmm. And so, but just yesterday we did almost 300 bags. Uh, and so we'll continue to do that. But that same afternoon, 200 of those bags left our, our building. 
And so we'll continue to do that. And our goal, uh, because of budget constraints, is we'll do 500 a week, yeah. along with um, the, the other partners that we work with. But the number is crazy right now of what our kids need and, and those snacks that are needed. Yeah, so it's a weird season of uh, the original need hasn't gone away. Right. And now we have all these new needs. Correct. And yet in the same place, uh, because we're a nonprofit, we exist based on the giving of others. That's right. And so that goes down because people are losing their jobs and they're scared about their retirement and they're scared. And then we're a ministry that operates on volunteers. Well, yeah. we've lost our volunteer base. Yeah. And so yeah. the no, need is growing and then... There's still the old need that isn't going away, right. and then our volunteer base is shrinking, and so it's it is a real um, uh, uh, crazy, a uh, perfect storm yeah. of of a disaster right now. And uh, luckily, we are a church that is prepared for things right. like this, and far more uh, just because of the giving of our people, not because of any you know sainthood of our staff that's just because right. we have really faithful people that give that's right uh, we're in a really good position to continue to help our churches everywhere are finding themselves legitimately at the end of their rope wondering how can they serve that's and right. so it is cool to be at a church that's able to meet these needs uh, and we can't do it into perpetuity but we can do it now right and we're trusting right. that god's going to uh, sustain us to continue doing it as long as the need is there uh one of the unique positions of Jerry and I as we've gotten to meet with superintendents and principals and uh, I just don't think the, the common person uh, particularly if you're from out of town and you're just in Lubbock with tech recognizes the deep deep needs in this community um, and that those are not going away and they're actually growing exponentially yeah. at the same time as our resource pool seems to be shrinking um, and so it's a it's an interesting perfect storm of of, of we're, requiring us to trust in God. We have found ourselves, uh, prior to this situation that we find ourselves in, doing a lot of ministry, doing a lot of things. And frankly, we ask the Lord to lead us in it, but do we rely on Him? And frankly, we're finding ourselves today going, God, we cannot do this apart from You. Mm -hmm. No way... Uh, when you look at, at the, those that are sick, those that are getting sick, um, those who have lost their jobs, only Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Only Jesus. Yeah. And so, uh, but I think that this is a perfect time for us to reevaluate and to say only Jesus will sustain us and only Jesus will get us through this. And that when the day comes, when we're beyond this, that it's still only Jesus. Jesus, regardless of our resources and what we have in place. Um, well, then, just one final question: um, When things, you know, eventually return to normal, what are uh, what are the ways that you know, specifically college students, but anybody in our church can continue to partner with our church to 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 serve and be on mission? I look forward to normalcy. I never thought I would complain. <laughs> yeah. I, I never thought I would complain uh, in the Starbucks line that the lines weren't long enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to yeah. returning back to some of that. Yeah. Um, I, I love how our schedules have freed up a lot. And so we go home and, and our relationships, maybe we may be getting tired of each other at home, but, but our relationships have grown because we don't have a choice. When you go through your calendar and you're taking stuff off because it's been postponed, and that's a game changer. But we have lots of opportunities. Evan has alluded. We've all talked about there are great needs in our community. And they've just gotten greater in this time. But we do a lot of things in the life of our church. And so if you want to be plugged in, one of the things that we ask you to do is on our website, uh, there's a, uh, an interest survey, if you will, kind of a, where you can go in and tell us what, what you're interested in doing. Uh, that's always up on our website at uh, firstlubbock.org. Uh, but also, uh, we have opportunities that are listed on there, uh, not today because we've postponed everything, and so we've changed a, a lot of things that we're doing. Uh, but when, the, when you, we are back to normal, there are opportunities that, that you can plug into through our soup kitchens, uh, which are, some are still happening. Uh, we're just delivering food uh, to the places where we're going uh, but there's there's opportunity for you uh, here in the life of our church where you can be on, on mission, 
where your feet are, but also as a part of our church. Jerry, can I piggyback off of something you said? Uh, as somebody who wants to take action right now, you know, and we're talking about, oh, we want to get this done, but volunteer base, and there's only so much we can do because we need to stay you know, yeah, social so, distance. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, and in a day and time, whenever anxiety and depression and just feeling alone, um, this is something that's been hard on my heart lately. You talk about, you know, getting tired of each other at home. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, getting to, 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 no, 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 I don't take, no, don't mean that badly. Uh, just, uh, there are a lot of people that, you know, may just be in their apartment by themselves. That's right. And, and I think, uh, as, as somebody who's, who's doing that, I'm moving into my new house this afternoon, thinking about what happens if we go on lockdown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's really important that we take advantage of technology Absolutely. right yeah. now. Absolutely. Stay connected to one another. Think about those people that you know are by themselves, yeah. that need encouragement, um, and a really easy way to show kindness and to show love and to be on mission where your feet are is pick up your phone and call yeah. or text yeah. or mm-hmm. send some kind of encouraging note. That's something we can do right now yeah. and continue to do. Uh, don't just do it because we're isolated and quarantined right now, but um, that's a great way to show the love of Jesus, I think, in this yeah. unique time. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 Of course. Well, um, guys, thank you so much for, for sitting down and, and doing this. And um, hope this has been uh, fruitful for you all. And uh, we'll see you in the next episode.